Water White, Book One, Chapter 29. Before heading back to the other side, Celeste scanned the land between the water's edge and the village for any signs of disruption. Not that she would have known what to do had there been any changes. The scars created when the fissures slammed back together looked like fields of gigantic spider webs. The image reminded her that Thunder's mate, Blossom, had perished there. She hoped Ranger and Floyd had found a safe haven for the glorious Jaguar and his cubs, and that they'd found Eni as well. She could see the last hilltop where Chimney tried to hide from them and wondered if everything might have been better for him and his village if she'd never left the children's home but she was following messages from beings she believed were greater and more mystical than herself, and they had not brought her any closer to an answer. Filled with doubt, she was questioning everything. She longed to return to the village, embrace those who befriended her, and find a way to ensure their safety. But if she went back now, she'd be no wiser than before. Instead, she turned northward. Only the anticipation of seeing Old Man Massive again kept her heading away from the village, but she even questioned that. Her flight across the big water was painfully slow and exhausting. She couldn't stop scanning the gooey surface of the water, hoping against hope she might find her winged companion floating along in the little boat, freed from the demon bird and waiting for her to find him. Orville? She tried time and time again, but he never responded. She reached the little island and traversed the circumference, but he wasn't there either. Grudgingly, she abandoned the search and closed the remaining distance more quickly. The cliff that had once filled her with anxiety now stood before her as a simple hurdle to navigate, and with a final push, she was over the top. Old Man Massive was asleep as she approached his bulbous nose, but he awoke instantly when she touched down. Little bird, you have come to tell me you found the key? He asked after a great gaping yawn. The key, the key, what's this key I'm supposed to find? She nearly shouted and then corrected herself. I'm sorry, old man, that was rude. You've just woken, and there's no way you'd know what's happened since I last saw you. Good morning. It's good to see you again. I've missed you. Good morning to you, Paloma. You are greatly troubled. You saved the boy, yes? And the animals? Yeah, but I messed up everything else on the other side. And Orville? Orville's gone. I am sorry to hear this. I believed he would be with you forever. Never forever, she whispered, remembering some of Orville's last words. It was because of me. I went to the other side and tried to change everything about it. I thought that, I thought that was what I was supposed to do, but... It was all wrong, and another boy almost died, too. It's a horrible place over there. They're scared and superstitious and mean, and they're all going to die in their homes if I don't figure out something soon. And honestly, most of them don't deserve to be saved. I don't have any power at all over the big water. Everyone's mistaken about me. That's part of the reason I'm here. You doubt your purpose, he said. And the other part? The other part is that I hope you know more than you're, you've told me so far. Maybe because you don't even know what you know. I need your guidance now more than ever, and I'm not going back until I get it. Celeste was searching for an answer she didn't really believe existed. My, oh my, you are not the hesitant little child anymore, old man massive chuckled. And if I have nothing more to tell you, 
Would you let them all perish, knowing you might have been able to find the solution on your own given time? Celeste could never bring back Orville. But what about the others? What about Ranger, Floyd, Eni, Bridger, Chimney, Thunder, and his cubs, Teresa, all the innocent children with their own powers just starting to emerge? And Nick, could you just abandon them? It was supposed to be better on the other side, she complained. According to whom? I don't know. I've just been doing what everyone tells me to do. I went south. I tried to find a home there, but everyone treated me like a criminal. Everyone? Was there no one who trusted you? Did nothing positive come from your short visit? Did you learn nothing from the other side that could help you find the key? Celeste thought about the children's excitement when she validated their worth and made them responsible for tasks. She thought about Teresa, and even though the children were kept from her once again, Maddie had found the courage to use her frightening new power to bring Mac and Teresa together in a special way. She thought about the magical animals who had pledged their lives to her, and she thought about Nick. But she still hadn't found the key to reversing the threat of the big water. Well, there were some good things, but even more bad. They blamed me for everything, and maybe I am to blame. The animals aren't safe, and the children with powers will probably send to, to the overleaders soon. Tell me about this overleader, his thorny brow furled. She's a scary old witch with a huge lizard and a spear with some strange metal called orcalcum, and when you touch it, brings back the most horrible memories you could ever imagine. They send people there for discipline, but I didn't have a choice. They dragged me there and knocked me out. I woke up in one of her nasty rooms and she tricked me into holding the spear. Or maybe I took it because I was curious. I don't know. It's all kind of a fuzzy memory. But when I think about it, I feel like crying again. Oh, and she's the one who sent the shifter to stop me. Only, only it got Orville instead. Again, I am sorry about your friend. But the shifter is gone? I think so. Orville was still partly there when it was fighting inside him. So if Orville died while he was fighting... Maybe the shifter died with him. Celeste felt overwhelming gratitude for the ultimate sacrifice Orville had made for her. This metal, Oracalcum, it is rare, yes, because it is found only on a distant sunken island. The overleader must have used the shifter to recover it, and much like the metal on the tip of Odin's spear, this metal is imbued with certain powers. But now you know its power, and you can find a way to defeat it. You know about Odin? They chant his name every night on the other side. They think it'll help bring rain. Well, some of them do. Yes, some say Odin is a powerful god. But like many of the gods, he remains a great mystery. I can understand their appeal for rain. There has been not a drop since the great shaking. Celeste wondered why, with a body of water as large as the big water in the endlessly sunny days, there would be no rain cycle. She had no answer, and the question nagged at her. And so, little one, I have told you nothing more than I know. What will you do now? The sun had passed its peak. Celeste looked north and saw nothing but steam from the water that had devoured everything. Nothing remained to help her there. The mountain spirit would try to protect her, but she couldn't survive there for long. And his words had sparked something in her mind. When I was a kid, I used to be good at solving puzzles. It just seems like there are too many missing pieces now, and I'm afraid to go back, she confessed. Maybe I am the one who's supposed to find the solution, but it's all still so fuzzy. 
I feel like I should be able to answer the questions in my brain, but the questions aren't even clear yet. What if I run out of time? Time is irrelevant, she finished for him, remembering his words from a previous visit. You say it's irrelevant, but I don't agree. Time is something we're running out of. The mention of time made her think of Nick's new power. Was it another piece of the puzzle? Are you sure there's nothing more you can tell me about this key I'm supposed to find? Only that I believe you already possess it. Well, it better not be my diary key because I lost it long ago. She knew he wasn't talking about an actual metal key, and what felt like long ago had been mere days. Listen, you must listen, he said. Listen to what? To what? I do not know. He sounded perplexed. I hear the word listen, and it is all I can tell you. Celeste was anxious to leave as if, as if something somewhere was calling to her. I'm always leaving you and coming back again a failure. Maybe this time I'll figure something out. I should go. I feel like things might start to make sense soon. Remember who you are, Old Man Massive reminded her. That, too, may help you. Thank you, Old Man. Thank you for listening. She smiled, and with a new sense of eagerness in her heart, said goodbye to the mountain once more. That ends chapter 29 of book one. And there's one more chapter before we get to the end of part one of this book.